This is Safi Hacking for HackingSAP.com and Interdops with another video about SAP Analytics Cloud. So in this video, we will have a look at an integrated scenario where we use all the main capabilities of SAC. So that are the BI reporting capability, we have planning, and we also have predictive capabilities in SAC. So I think that most users are familiar with the reporting capabilities of SAC. Um, it's basically what we see here on the screen. So we have a very simple story with a table and in that table we see some historical data uh, about car sales divided by brand and country. So I guess that's more than 80% of the SEC users will, uh, will use uh, purely reporting on historical data. So in addition, we can also use the planning capabilities of the SEC to plan, uh, for example, future uh, values. So what I could do, for example, here, I could enter the planning value for each period and for each row, uh, where each row is a combination of a country and a brand. So I could fill this in for this whole data set. And then uh, we have our planning data, which I again can use to, uh, to report on outside of this table, for example. So, so that, that's really a combination that's used often. Um, but the third one, the, the predictive capabilities, so these ones, the predictive scenarios, well, that, that's more like a standalone feature of SEC. Uh, and in this scenario, I want to show you how you can use predictive scenarios also within reporting and within the planning capabilities of SEC. So what we can do already for quite some time is use the built-in predictive forecast option within planning. And with that, we can do a forecast for a single row in a table. So let's try that for this combination. So we have France and Renault. And I can click this option here, predictive forecast. We get this menu where it says, okay, you're going to predict the sales for France for this brand. And the output should be in the FC version where we can do a prediction for this range, uh, January until December. And we use as an input the actual results starting from 2015. So I could also already say, okay, this is a linear regression or a triple exponential smoothing, but for now I'll let SEC decide that by itself. And let's click on preview. So now it will go through the historical data and see if it can build up a forecast for these upcoming 12 months. So there we go. So here we see the historical results. And starting from 2020, we see the predictive values. So if I now click OK, these values will be written back to the forecast version. So that's pretty nice, but unfortunately I can only do that for one row at a time. So if I select multiple, I get this mes message here. So that's problematic if I have a lot of combinations that I would like to do this for. So what I can do is I can use the built-in predictive scenario option and run a full scenario for all data in my data set. So I'm going to choose a time series predictive scenario here. And let's call this uh, car sales forecast. And what I now can do is I can now choose the model that I just used in this story as a source for my predictive scenario. So let's search for the model. So there we go. 
and I'm of course going to use the actual data um, as input for this scenario. Well, we have to select a signal. In this case, we only have one we can use, so that puts a sales measure. And we also have to pick our date dimension. We will do a forecast for 12 months. And the entity, that's a combination of dimensions that we want to do this forecast for. So in our case, we have brand and we have country. And what this scenario will do, it will make a forecast for all the combinations of brands and countries. So basically, everything that we see here on the left side of this table. Well, I want to use all the observations that we have until the last one. And um, well, with this option, we can force the, the tool to only come back with positive values. But let's, let's keep it like it is right now. And hit train and forecast. So we now get an overview of all the combinations of the dimension members with their individual so-called MAPE. Well, this is an indicator of the reliability of uh, the prediction that has been done. So we can also click through. And then we see this combination between, in this case, Volvo and Belgium and see the forecast um, that has been created. And then we should look at the line in the middle. And the other ones are the error max and min. And down below we can also see the individual predictive values for each period. So we can have some more details here in the signal analysis where we can also uh, more clearly can see any trends or any cycles. Um, like here. And we can do that for all the uh, combinations. So I can also switch to a different one here. Oh, that one isn't available in the data set. As you can see, this is a completely different uh, trend and therefore um, prediction than uh, the moment that we had before. So what we now can do is we can export these results back to our planning model. So if I click here on save forecasts, I can select my forecast version that we saw before here in the story. So that's basically this part of the story. Click on save. And now all these predictive results are written back to our model. So if I now refresh the data in the story, we will see that all the predictions that we just created in the predictive scenario are posted in the, the forecast version of this, uh, of this model. So with that, we have a very nice scenario where we can use predictive scenarios to support our planning activities. And in the end, of course, also the reporting on top of that. And with that, we are at the end of this video. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.